Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Today we're joined by Megan, who is a model that I've had a pleasure of working with a number of times. Uh, Today she gives some great advice to anyone thinking about getting into the industry. And she tells us a powerful story of what photography can do and mean to some people. Let's get into the conversation. Going into this conversation, Mm -hmm. uh, for someone who doesn't know you on like a personal level, What's the one thing that myself or someone listening should know about you? Um, probably the main thing is my job, to be honest, which is that I model. Um, I model mm-hmm. pretty much everything. I don't have a particular niche. I work freelance. I'm not signed with an agency. Um, so everything that you see on Instagram or um, my more explicit page which I've got on OnlyFans um I have managed to put together myself uh yeah. which I'm very very proud of myself for I've been modeling for nearly three years um three years come July I think and mm. yeah everyone seems to think that I'm a very confident person when I'm not <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you say you you've done it all yourself to do you, do you and you're not signed with an agency mm-hmm. so you do all the sort of admin side behind it the arranging the yeah how how, how do you manage that how, how do you cope with that because you're, you're a busy person yeah. at the moment. how do you man how do you manage um Ill? <laughs> honestly i do not I, can, have... I, can, I can imagine it's quite stressful i never have a day off i never. i don't get days off i do a little bit of admin every day whether that's answering messages from people who um message me on instagram just wanting to talk not even like arranging a photo shoot just wanting to get to know me um so i talk to people through that i post every three to four days i was a little bit late on this one because i forgot what day it was um and yeah i just i'm always always working i'm constantly being told to get off my phone and stop working um But yeah, it's it's constant. Yeah. So. How, how do you like? How does that play an effect on like your health and your mental health? Like, if you're constantly working and you never have that mm. sort of day off mm. as such, how how do you cope with that? It doesn't feel like working. It just oh. feels like a very time-consuming hobby. <laughs> it's kind of the <laughs> best way to put it, because I don't. Yes, it's hard work. Yes, it's you know it takes everything. But I enjoy it so much. It doesn't have the same mental toll. The only thing that has a mental toll when it comes to the modelling is my relationship with my body. Um, But that's something I'm working on. And yeah, I just, I love it so much. So why would I not want to do it all of the time? And every part of that I enjoy. So it just doesn't feel like work, but it is time consuming. So... So what you mentioned about your body and the, because if anyone who's uh, seen your work or has worked with you, I know it's quite a, um, some shoots can be quite uh, intimate Mm -hmm. between a model and a photographer, having worked with yourself um, a couple of times before as well. How, how do you approach like a shoot? You know, it's saying, for for a photographer you haven't worked with before. Yeah. How do you sort of approach a shoot and you knowing the sort of level of the, uh, sh- what the shoot's um, going to be? Well, the first thing I do before I book a shoot is I vet the photographer. So I will look at their work. I will look at the models who they've worked with. I will look at the comments. I'll look at um, if they've shared previous work that they've done together. I'll, I'll look at how enthusiastic uh, the models are. And I'll basically try and find out what kind of person they are through talking. Um, mm-hmm. So I end up getting kind of a vibe from who they are. I'll see if we if we click, if we gel, and I ask about the concept. And it's kind of looking at how passionate somebody is about the concept that they're talking about. If they're passionate, mm-hmm. you've got me on board pretty much straight away. Um, I will always ask to bring someone with me, whether I do or don't. Um 
is frankly irrelevant. I don't, I will always ask, but I don't always bring someone. Um, but again, your response tells me everything I need to know. Yeah. So. Do you think, do you feel like you're a good judge of character as well? I haven't been wrong so far. Um, you not. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been wrong so far. There was. No, actually I have. There was only one, one incident where I was wrong. Uh, but it wasn't in the way that I thought it was. And I won't say who it was or the situation um, because it wasn't directly involving me. Um, but I was a bad judge of character on that one and it's not something I've dealt with yet. So, But it's only happened once. So I'm, I'd say I'm, I do fairly well. Fairly good at my betting process. <laughs> what sort of advice would you give say someone who is a, a young model that's kind of getting into that sort of uh, genre of modeling what, what 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 sort of advice would you give them um i'd have a few pieces of advice the first thing is really look at who you're working with like don't um, skip any steps because it's your safety at the end of the day yeah. Um, always tell someone where you're going send them updates in my case what I tend to do is I will say on my Instagram story who I'm working with I'll give updates through the day and I will probably do like a little message being like god that was such a long day or something just to be like I'm here with this person this is how it's going and I'm, I've left that person um, and it can, doesn't matter how much, like sometimes I do it because I'm really excited about working with that person and you know, it's, I want to just tell people that this is what I'm doing today. Other times it's just so everybody is aware of where I am. <laughs> this is, this is what's happening today. Just on the off chance, something God forbid was to happen. Yeah. But the um, other yeah. thing I would I mean, say, yeah, yeah. pardon? No, no, go on, Karen. Um, <laughs> the other thing I would say is again, be kind to yourself. You are going to see yourself doing poses and looking in a way that you have never seen your body before. You are going to know, you're going to learn that your body will do things that you've never thought it would do and it's going to look ways you never thought it would look. You have to accept that as you bend over, you're going to have a really arched back and your sh shoulders are going to be hunched. You have to understand that your body is going to kind of smush and squish and you're going to get rolls. It doesn't matter how skinny you are. You're going to get rolls. You're going to have stretch marks. You've got to be able to learn to love your body for everything that it can do because it's you and you is, be yeah. you is beautiful. It's just that it can be really hard to see yourself in that light. Yeah. So you have to do a lot of work on learning to love yourself and accept how you look. Yeah. Um, and that's hard. Did you... Is that something you are still sort of trying to work on or do you feel comfortable within yourself? Both. Both. I feel comfortable in myself for the majority. I started... No, it actually goes before. Before I started modelling, I was like every other photographer. You do not put me in front of the camera. <laughs> I don't even want to look at myself in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mm. want to stay behind the camera because that's where I'm comfortable. I was so camera shy. I hated myself in pictures. I, it was just my worst nightmare. And, I mean, the reason I started modelling was because I didn't like myself. Yeah. And if I was going to be taking pictures of women who have never been in front of the camera before, because I wanted, I wanted to do boudoir, just, you know, for mm. context there. Mm. Yeah. Um, if I was going to ask women who had never been in front of the camera before, who'd never met me, to strip down to their underwear, if not nude, to then take a, a sexy photo shoot for themselves, husbands, boyfriends, presents, whatever, and I didn't like myself enough to be in front of the camera myself, how hypocritical is that? Yeah. So I was like, okay, yeah. I need to learn. I need to get comfortable in front of the camera. I need to learn how to pose. I need to to work on myself so that I can help the people I photograph. Yeah. And it just so happened I fell in love with it along the way. Yeah, no, 100%. But, I, yeah, going, going back, yeah, 
adding on to that, I'd say it's uh, being a photographer myself and the sort of work I create. Mm. Although I'm not comfortable, like you say, not, not being comfortable in front of the camera myself and expecting a model to do that, I have started experimenting. I haven't released any of the work, but okay. I have started experimenting with self-portraits, uh, both clothed and nude. Mm. And I can tell you, like looking or editing those photos is so difficult. Mm -hmm. It's got a bit easier as I've like, as the more I do it, but it, it is still so difficult. Yeah. But yeah, no, like you say, you can't expect someone else to be in front of the camera if you're not prepared yourself to do the same. Yeah. So yeah, no, hundred percent. It's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard, yeah. and people don't realise how hard it is until you've done it. And especially for yeah. doing self portraits, I would say it's even harder. Because not only do you have to set it up and do it and look at them almost as if you're not looking at yourself. You have to look at it because I've obviously done my, my fair share of self-portraits, both nude and clothed. Hmm. I had to look at myself as if I was looking at a different person because I was so harsh on myself and how I looked that I was like, well, if I was to put Somebody else, if I was to have a client come in and do these photos, would I ever say this about them? No, mm. because I'd look at them and be like, they are beautiful exactly how they are. These are stunning shots, but because they're me, why is it different? It's things like that. It's like, I don't deserve to be talked about, like thought about in that way. And I would never expect to shoot with a photographer and have them think about me this way. So why would I do that about myself? It's it's a hard thing to get your head around and to accept. Yeah, yeah. It's a hard thing to realise, but once you do, you have such a better relationship with yourself, and you accept yeah. yourself far more. But it takes practice. It's not a. It's not a. You know, you you do it, and then it's all good. You're you're gone. Like you're gone. You're <laughs> you're good for the rest of the time. You're done. You know, the journey's over. It takes time, mm. and that is something I'm still learning to do three years on, yeah. but it's better. Yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's hard, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. but it's a journey. Mm. Yeah, definitely, yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's made me, it's just getting me thinking, it's like making me want to sort of experiment more with that. You should. Self-portraits, oh, yeah, no. So I miss doing soft portraits. Plan, planning it out now. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of made you want to get into that sort of that that type of photography, um, photography and modelling? Why not just stick with the? I know you said um, you do all sorts, but yeah, some of the work I, 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 I the work I've seen of yours and the, the sort of artistic, the nude. It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you. It's your best. I have to say, it's your best work. Thank you. Um, but why? Why? What made you want to do that? Right, you're going to have to bear with me on this story because it's going to sound weird to no. begin with. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I was in uni, I I dropped yeah. out. I dropped out early. Um, I completed my foundation course. I went on to the third year and I hated my university. I hated the teaching. It was sucking the life out of me. But one day we were supposed to be having a studio day. We were supposed to be learning in the studio and we were... Because this, this was for the photography yes. course you were doing, wasn't yes, it? Yes, that's right. Yeah, I remember. Um, we had a, a studio day sprung on us that wasn't quite what we thought. So normally what we would do is on these studio days, we wouldn't be in the classroom, we'd go to the studio, we'd learn lighting, I would normally have to sit in the chair as people took pictures of me because no one else wanted to do it and I was, you know, tired of waiting around for someone to sit down so I did it, which is again how I started modelling. <laughs> and um, this day was different. We were told, so there's a all-girls school, middle, like essentially a middle school, um who's coming in and you are going to teach them, you're going to do a workshop in an hour. And we had no time to prepare. We had no idea how to teach. We didn't know what to do. And we were told that 
you know, these these girls were looking to to do um, a course potentially around photography. They wanted to see kind of what's what's what, you know, what they can they can study and explore. And we had to convince them to do photography. <laughs> and I was like, right. And you've given us no time to prep. Great. Okay. So we ended up having a, a quick chat and they you could see they weren't interested. They they could they wanted to be anywhere else. <laughs> and we ended up setting up some gel lights and we were like, okay, let's just, you know, we'll take some pictures of you and your friends and, you know, we're gonna have fun with it and it's not gonna be too serious and all of these then that was kind of when everyone was like, oh, excited, we get pictures for Instagram, basically. Yeah. And there was this one girl who was crying in the corner and she really, really, really didn't want to have her picture taken. So I went over and I had a chat with her and I asked her why and she said that she was ugly. This girl was 13 she said that she was ugly and she didn't want her picture taken. She didn't look good in pictures. She didn't want to stand in front of everyone because they'd laugh. And I couldn't believe it. I completely related with her when I was her age. And bless her, she had already started having really bad problems with acne. And she was so self-conscious and I was like, okay, I'll tell you what, you don't have to have your picture taken, but I would really like you to be a part of this because you are beautiful and you deserve to see that. And that is something that's beautiful about photography. You see yourself in a light that you don't normally see yourself in because what you've done is you've put trust into the person behind the camera to show you how everyone else sees you when you can't see yourself like that. And her friend was trying to convince her to be like, come on, let's, let's, do, let's do one together. Let's do one together. I said, okay, I'm going to offer you something that no one else is going to get. Have a look on your phone. Find a picture that you really, really love. And I will recreate it for you with you in the picture. She said, okay. So she had a look and she found the most beautiful picture with the most beautiful lighting. It was so simple. It was one light. It was like... Um, as she was sat facing me, it was one light here, so it was split lighting. Mm -hmm. And it was so beautiful, so dramatic. And I said to my teacher at the time, I said, okay, here's the situation. We have five minutes left of this session before everyone needs to go. Can I remove all of the equipment that we've currently got set up, switch it over and do a photo shoot with this girl? And he went, if you can do it in time, yes. But once that bell goes, you're done, whether you get the shot or not. I went, great. And I said to my friend, I was like, quick, let's get this, these lights set up. This is what we're doing. Help me. We got it done in two minutes. So we had three minutes. I couldn't believe we got it done that quick. I've never changed lights that quickly. But we, um, we got her set up and she'd been crying. So she was a little bit puffy. And I told her to just sit and look at me. She didn't have to do anything. She didn't have to smile. She just had to look at me. And I kind of pointed my finger. I was like, follow my, follow my hand to kind of direct where her eyes were meant to go. Because it's really hard to be like, go 45 degrees, because not everyone can do that. Not everyone yeah, can visualize yeah. that. So I use my hand and I'm like, follow my hand, you know, see where, see where I go. And you place them exactly where you want them. And these portraits were so beautiful. One of my favourite portraits I have ever taken to this day. And I can't share it because she was 13, 14 years old. I didn't have her parents' permission. And so I've, I've got that photo. And it is one of my favourite things I've ever done. But her reaction, she looked at it, looked at me and said, I didn't know I could look like that. And she started crying, but this time it was crying with happy tears. And all of her friends went, oh my God, you're so beautiful. Look at that. I love that. Can I have a picture? I want to look like that. 
and you could just see her like oh my god <laughs> she just got so happy and you could just see her mentality switch and to have done that to have caused that to look have somebody come in so self-conscious and completely change like she had a bounce in her step when she walked away she wanted those photos she wanted more pictures done and that completely changed my life and I was like okay the amount of women mothers people who are slightly older or who are starting to show signs of aging people who have transitioned into women people who are struggling with their femininity people who are struggling with their identity men who struggle finding their femininity or their self-confidence like anyone who is struggling with how they look or how they feel in their own skin a boudoir shoot changes how you see yourself it changes yourself and you see yourself in a different light, you see your, your sexuality, you, you know, your sensuality, you, you feel so much better in yourself, you know that you are capable of that, and especially for mothers, or people who are aging, they feel like they lose that part of themselves, and I wanted to be the one to help them get it back, mm. I wanted to be the person who, they walk in, they don't know what to do, they're really uncomfortable, they're nervous, and to show them what everyone else sees and how beautiful they actually are. So that when they walk out, they look at those photos and are like, that's me. I did that, like that's, that's me. I don't look like that every day, but it's still me. I can be that person. And you just change. Your whole mentality changes. You've got a bit more of a bounce in your step. You feel like you're capable of doing that. You just, you feel good. And it's just the most incredible feeling for them and for me. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's addictive. It's, it's life changing yeah. to be able to give someone that. Such an incredible, that's an incredible story. <laughs> honestly, that's, it's, um, yeah, it's just, I'm just letting that sort of like sink in. But yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely, it's, it's the power of mm. photography, I suppose. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's something that does really go unrecognized. You know, we, we, we do, there's a lot of photographers out there that, um, and, and models that, you know, we just simply take photos for the sake of taking photos and thinking, oh, let's get the, um, get the likes or some, or, you know, the subscribers or the follows and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but there's also that power behind a picture or a portrait, especially that can really sit with someone for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And it is, it really is. Yeah. No, I think that's absolutely beautiful. I still experience yeah. it as a model. Yeah. I will have somebody take a picture of me and I will jump up and down, I will clap my hands, I will be like, oh my god, I love that picture, or I didn't know I could look like that, or oh my god, that's me. Mm -hmm. I, I still react like that, and I make an effort to when I feel like that, to show that I feel like that. Because it does, it doesn't matter how long you've been in front of the camera for, you always do different concepts, you always look different, you age, so you look different. And you constantly don't believe that's you. <laughs> like you are aware, you've just done the whole process. You're aware of all of the poses you've just done. But you see the final images and you're just like, that can't be me. It's not possible. I don't feel like that. I look like that, but I don't feel like that. So you kind of look at it and I'm like, well, maybe I should. Maybe I should feel like that because that is me. I did that. And I'm clearly doing something right because I helped create that. Yeah. Like it gets to a point we can't really ignore it. <laughs> no. Yeah, so, yeah, it's powerful. Yeah. But that's why I've always yeah. said if you do boudoir, you have to go, or portraiture, you have to do it with someone who knows what they're doing. If you go with any old person with a camera, 
it can go terribly wrong and destroy your confidence. Mm. You have to go with someone who knows what they're doing because it's make or break. Mm. And I think you can you can really tell that behind the person's work as well. You you, you can have these you, you see these two different types of like sort of nude photos mm. on Instagram. You've got the the really beautiful artistic um well thought you can see the thought behind the portrait. And then you've got the photos that are just simply the the models just naked for the sake of being naked or topless or something mm -hmm. like that, and you and you can really tell the difference between the two. Yeah, definitely. I think the main thing is if you were to look at a picture and you go, if you were to put clothes on that model, would you have the same effect? Mm. Is like the biggest tell. So say if you go and do, you know, a nude portrait in a landscape. If you were to put clothes on that model, it would be a completely different vibe. It would be a completely different message. And it would still be amazing, but it's totally different. You yeah. take the clothes away, it's powerful, it's vulnerable. It's a whole different message. Whereas if you were to put, um, I'm trying to think of, the other way around in terms of context. If you were to put, say, in a, uh, I was going to say studio, but it's the same kind of thing. Like, there's a reason. But if you were to put a model in a situation where she could be close, she could not be. I can't think of mm. one right now. I've just tried. Um, but if you were to put a model in a situation where you know, she could be fully clothed, but isn't. And you take that picture, it could be an incredible picture. Yeah. But if you were to put clothes on her, would it say the same thing? Yeah. Is, is that kind and of thing? It's, yeah. It's all about the yeah. message. Is I it mean, going to change the message? Yeah, I'm sort, of, I'm sort of trying to picture that in my head. Say like a model's, they're on the bed. You can do the same pose. Mm -hmm. One with clothes and one without the way you view both of those photos is going to be completely different. Mm -hmm. mm. It's all about, yeah. is the message going to like be what you want it to be? Are people going to look at your picture and see the same thought process as you? Or at least similar, yeah. because everyone obviously sees art differently. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they, is it going to be along the same lines? And that is such a hard thing to do. And that takes storytelling. But you need to have some kind of concept and some kind of story in your work for there to have a story to be seen, really, if that makes sense. If there's not a story, the audience isn't going to see a story. It's, it's as simple as that. It's If you want someone to look at your work and be like, I love that, I can see this, 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 this in it. There is actually a follower that I have who I talk to quite often and he gives the most incredible analysis of so many of my photos. And you can see it sometimes in my comments, but sometimes it's just like a private chat. And he will really? break down my pictures and be like, I see this, 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 this. Your emotion tells me this, 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 this. I can really picture this being in this situation or this or whatever. And it is fascinating <laughs> to see someone break it down like that and to try and create a story based on something that I haven't verbally told. Yeah. And it's yeah. amazing. It's, it's the, I love yeah, it. The, that sort of, yeah, it's, all, it's always nice to see that sort of response to a picture. Some, because you, from what you say, you, you say like art is, is, is subjective. So um, what one person consists art might not mean anything to someone else. So it's quite nice to s hear people's hear what they think the message in the picture is mm. compared to what you think because you think oh okay yeah no I didn't actually see it like that but yeah okay yeah, yeah no I, I see what you mean yeah it's, 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 it's always nice to have that sort of response yeah it's amazing it's... with the with the what sort of work you do having that sort of um response to 
to the work. I I can imagine you probably get the complete opposite as well. Or am I wrong? Oh no, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I. Ah, oh, yeah, it's yeah. vulgar, really vulgar. <laughs> how does how does that make you feel? Because you're obviously you're you're there. You you create art at the end of the day, mm -hmm. but then to have a response on that type of photo, mm. how does that make you feel? Um, it depends on how strong I am that day. Normally, mm. it's okay. for the majority. I have a good old laugh, like a proper belly laugh. I'm like, someone has actually taken the time to message this. Someone has taken the time to think that I'm going to what like this, like that's that's quite incredible in itself. Um, but there are times where I look at it and I'm just like, can you really see nothing else? Do you really look at this and see nothing else? And it's more pity than anything, because yeah. if you can look at a piece of art, and I'm not saying mine's the best because it's not, I have seen far more pieces of work by so many artists in so many different medias that are so much better, but to look at something, especially something which is implied nude or lingerie or anything, and I know lingerie tends to invite those kind of comments because obviously lingerie is supposed to be sexy. It's supposed to have those kind of connotations, that's why you wear it, but, mm. well, for the majority, that's why people wear it. But do you do you still think that's it's okay for that sort? Because of, you you say it's kind of it's meant to come across sexy and that, but would it still be okay for someone to comment or message you with such comments? No. Or do you think if is it is it the model's fault or something? No, absolutely no. not. <laughs> Lingerie by design is supposed to be a sexy garment that people often wear for intimate times with a partner mm -hmm. or to wear for yourself to make you feel confident, to make you feel sexy. That is the nature of the item. However, it is about context. As I, I put on my stories recently, talking about whether or not I'm okay with people sexualizing me. There are points where if I put up a, a very clearly sexy image, I'm expecting those kind of comments. I don't, I don't always appreciate them. And if you do it in a tasteful way, sure. I'm happy for you to say, you know, you're beautiful, you're pretty, I love that on you, whatever. But, and I'm going to be explicit here and very vulgar. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. I had somebody message me saying, I want to fuck you in the ass really hard. No, no hi, no, no, literally nothing else, just that message. And I'm like, what do you want me to do with that? Genuinely, what do you want me to do with that? Go, oh my God, yes, that's exactly what I want to this random stranger. No. Do you want me to yell at you because you want some kind of response? Well, you're not going to get that either. Like, I don't really understand what you want from that. Because I'm not going to give it to you. Yeah, it it, or, make, it does make it does make you think like why why does someone say that? Mm -hmm. Like what goes through their mind? Why are they typing that that response out? Mm -hmm. What is going through their mind? Thinking like you say, what are you going to respond to them? What sort of response? Yes, okay, let's do it. It's the kind of ne any negative response is still a response. Yeah. And I think they were hoping for a negative response because it's still a response. But I didn't even give them that. But it's it's things like that where I'm just like, okay, I know I've put that lingerie on because I feel good in it. And there have been some very, very, very generous people who have bought me a lot of my more expensive lingerie, a lot of the Honey Birdette. I've only bought two uh, two pieces myself. The rest of it, someone else has bought for me. Or like multiple people have kind of put money towards to help me pay for it. 
and it's incredibly generous. But even then, they don't sexualize me the way some of these people do. And it's just, I want to say fascinating, to be honest, because I'm not offended in the way that they probably want me to be. It's more just like, why? <laughs> Yeah. Why would you do when that? I, yeah, when I see those types of comments, whether it's on, um, in f photography or or when I'm gaming or something, when a male speaks to a female, mm. you, it, well, I can tell you within the gaming industry, it's like women are looked down upon. Yeah, by I can imagine men a lot. Um, but it does. Like you say, it does fascinate me. Like, I, I would like to sit down with those people and ask them and talk to them why, what made you say this or what made you respond to a photo um, in this way mm. and actually find out what's going on in their head and <laughs> that purpose behind it and what they wanted from that comment. It does, yeah, no. I've had somebody it's... message and just say, like I've had this a couple of times, but they've said something really vulgar and I've, I have replied and I've gone, why on earth would you say that to me? And they've gone, oh, well, I'm sad and I'm lonely and I'm, you know, I'm looking for, for somebody to talk to. I'm like, and you think that's a good way of going about it? Really? That's, that's, that's probably why you're alone. That's Yeah. I'm just like, that's, yeah. that's the most bizarre thing I've ever heard. Why would you use that as an excuse? Well, like I've had, this is a good one. Somebody who had said that exact excuse had messaged me um, privately, but on all of my posts, on my backup account, this happened on my backup account, he's been putting in, like, the the Wikipedia definition, because it's not even, like, the Google definition, it's, like, the Wikipedia definition of things like prostitute. And it's just, like, or dignity. And I'm just, like what where <laughs> this was on a seven second video of me in loungewear saying that I feel comfy and green that was it I wasn't doing anything I, I sat there for seven seconds and he called me a prostitute that's so bizarre it's like where <laughs> how what oh, oh. where did you get that yeah, no, I think it does go back to like what's what is going through one's mind when they are responding in that way it's i i take my hat off to you though for like dealing with that sort of that sort of thing because i know there are yeah. probably a lot of people out there who don't respond very well to the negative mm. comments in in such a way it's yeah yeah no i'll tell you what what's it like because you've got I think you're about on just over 18k on Instagram now. 18.3, yeah. Yeah, it's just over, and it's that's it's a large following. I remember when when you first started <laughs> modelling, and the, the, the growth is just incredible. You know, from the little shoots you were doing. Mm -hmm. I remember, did did was it your first nude one? Was that the one we did? Mm -hmm. It was, wasn't and it? And I was, I yeah. think I had maybe 200 followers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that shoot. I've still got the pictures. So do I. They're um, good, good. Um, some of my best work that actually. Yeah. Some of that, yeah. Some of the the, the end pictures we got from that. So I do want to work with you um, again because the yeah no. we've worked together twice now. And two, yeah, yeah, yeah two, twice two, now. Yeah. And those bodyscapes are still unlike anything I've ever done before. And I would love to do another shoot like it. And especially like there are some where it's like the more like back bends and focusing on like the stretch marks around my hips and my bum. And I just, I think that was actually the shoot. This is again, appreciating, you know, when I'm feeling it, but seeing my stretch marks like that, I've always liked my stretch marks. I've never had a bad relationship with my stretch marks, Yeah. but I loved my stretch marks after that. Because I really, truly saw how beautiful that texture is on skin. Yeah. And I, as I said in my story the other day, I was like, it got, it's gotten to a point 
or I actually wish I had more because I think that stretch marks in particular are so beautiful and I know that they I know that mine are very faint I've got the texture but I don't necessarily have like the really bright red lines or purple lines that a lot of people do but even then I love stretch marks I think they are so beautiful and I don't think they're appreciated enough no I I totally agree there I um that's that's one thing I love to photograph the most and it's stretch marks or or scarring Mm -hmm. or some sort of scar um I find it it's fascinating and then when people do um agree to um capture that within a shoot I I have the absolute most respect for them it's hard Um, yeah yeah and I think a lot of people fail to realize everyone has them stretch marks Mm -hmm. I've had them it's just like I think that's the other thing a lot of people people forget men do yeah it's Mm. it's I know that the majority of men that I have met who then have stretch marks are so arguably more self-conscious about their stretch marks than women Mm. and I think it's because a lot of people forget that all genders (laughs) get stretch marks if you have a human body you get stretch marks you change you you move you grow up you you know your size fluctuates you get bigger through muscle through weight through whatever you get smaller it's what happens it's you you live you get stretch marks there's nothing wrong with it yeah like you say yeah body changes Mm -hmm. you grow you shrink so it's, it's it's what it's what the human body is is going to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I I I I have yeah, well, I have the most respect for any model that comes and works with myself. Um, given the type of work, um, I had a um, I had a model uh just the other week. It was uh, first time ever doing a shoot. We only did like portraits and stuff. Um, but she said how she just hates looking at photos of herself and i and i said she was all she was quite nervous but i was like you're doing absolutely fine it's it's just having that confidence within yourself and not worrying about how you look and i find i think i i think a lot has a blame on society and social media Mm-hmm. And it's it, it 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 we're we're told we're supposed to look a certain way. Yeah. How 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 do you feel about the whole social media thing and and how we're we're told we should look this way if a photo has twenty thousand likes and a photo that doesn't have any likes. Um. How how do you feel about that? Likes have only ever mattered to me in the sense that I want more people to see it. Because it gives me an indication of how many people have seen the work. That is the only reason I ever acknowledge likes. Because I don't have a business account because Instagram doesn't like my work and likes to take it down. Um, So I can't see how many people have viewed it. So likes are my only indication for that. I don't care if people like my work more than others. I It gives me an indication of what people like to see. But it does not mean that I'm only going to do that thing that people like to see. Mm. People will like more my lingerie work or my art nude work. If I go into a fantasy set, I get maybe 200 to 400 likes. If I do something in lingerie, I can go up to a thousand. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing fantasy. No. I will do a, a portrait of just my, like a headshot, shoulders shoulders up. And I love those. I love everything I do. So I will post what I want to post and I will shoot what I want to shoot. <laughs> like I created my account because I wanted to document my journey. And I wanted to share it with people but I'm not going to adjust myself to what people want to see because 
if you want to follow me, you can follow me. If you don't want to follow me, don't follow me. I'm not going to change myself and what society says that I should post because someone wants to see a particular type of thing. That's great. You know, follow for those pieces that I do of that particular type of thing. Follow other people who specialise in that kind of thing. But it won't just be that. That's why my page is so varied. Yeah. Because I refuse to have a niche. <laughs> yeah, no, I, did, I, yeah, I actually, I, I was having a little scroll through your feed um, this morning. And you, with a lot of models, you can see the same work, the like that niche of work that is consistent through mm -hmm. their their feed but yours is completely different every you know you might have a few artistic nude and then you've got i think there was a picture further down of you sitting on i think it's probably brighton or somewhere like that just in your casual clothing was it with so a dinosaur really... dinosaur beanie possibly so i probably <laughs> had my hair across my lip that's the one that was liverpool yeah. liverpool ah liverpool there we go so, yeah, no, it really does show it. You, you are creating the work that you want to create mm -hmm. rather than saying, I do this, I do nude and that's all I do, or I, or I don't do nude. Um, not that that's like a problem or anything, mm -hmm. um, or, it's, or it's a bad thing. People have it's, different it's levels. Nice. Yeah, no, exactly, yeah. People have different levels, and it's, it's nice to see that you are always happy to share all types of work yeah. rather than just sharing the that one type so it's yeah no it's really nice i create what inspires me i will work with people who inspire me if you don't inspire me i'm not working with you it's as simple as that because if i'm not inspired i won't give it my everything mm. and I think that's the thing. If you want to work with somebody, you want them to give it their everything. Mm. Yeah. So I think that's where the best that's where the best work is created, I feel. Yeah. It's when you're passion. both passionate about what you're yeah, the passion behind what you're creating is probably one of the most, if not the most important thing mm -hmm. when when creating this type of work. So I will travel yeah. to wherever you want me to go. But I need to be passionate about it. I need yes, to look at this and be like, I can see myself creating this. Mm. I want to... It doesn't even have to be something that I can envision. If the photographer I'm working with, designer even, artist, whatever, the person that I'm working with, if they are passionate about their concept, their idea and how they're going to make it happen... I will be passionate too. I don't have to understand it. I can show up on the day and have no idea what I'm doing. But if they are passionate, I'm all in. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I want to help someone create a vision that they have. And the fact that they have asked me to do that is an honour. <laughs> and I never take that for granted. Do you think you were, if this wasn't, if modelling wasn't a job, do you think you would still, still do it? If it was just sort of like a, I don't know, you said earlier, it's kind of your, you're kind of just, do, you're working, but it's kind of just a constant hobby. Do you think if you had your nine to, a nine to five job and then modelling at the weekend, would you, would you still do it? If I had to. Yes. Um, well, I'm now full-time model. Yeah. Um, and I have been since October. I say that. I've, I have been in a very lucky position where I haven't had to work for the last two years. Nearly full two years. And I'm very grateful for that because the people who I've lived with have allowed me to not get a job and to just focus on this. But paying I have only been consistently paid since October and okay. it's been really hard because I didn't want to get a a nine-to-five job 
or a part-time job even. Because, and this is where the battle thing came in, I was so set on this is what I want to do. There is nothing else that I would want to do. I felt like a failure if I was to get a 95 because I knew I would hate it. And I never wanted to go into a job that I would hate. I didn't want to be one of those people who hate their job and, you know, don't want to get up in the morning and it drains the bloody soul out of them. I can tot- I totally relate to that. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> so, but yeah, this is the yeah, thing. Like, yeah. I have met so many people who hate what they do. And I, mm. if I have the opportunity to not do that, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, to- absolutely. Absolutely. It's... Yeah. It's not conventional. You, you'd be you'd be absolutely stupid not to. Exactly. If you're given the if you're given the opportunity, and you're in a position you can, you do it. Exactly. There's there's no there's no question about it. You do it. So I've had a lot of arguments with a lot of people over it, who yeah. don't like the financial flexibility, shall we say, because it's as and when I book jobs. And there's a reason I don't take collaborations really anymore. I do very, very few collaborations with a very select group of people. And that is because either the amount of work that I'm going to get from them outweighs anything. We are experimenting with a concept that we both equally have kind of managed together. Or the relationship that I have with them beats anything financial. But they are like, they become in between jobs. That's as and when I have the free time. I don't book them and then not book a paid job. It's as and when I'm free with those people, which means a lot more flexibility, which means I don't get to work with them as often. But um, yeah, it's... It can be really difficult financially. I am living paycheck to paycheck, but that's partly why I have OnlyFans. Because yeah. OnlyFans is the thing that pays my bills. Yeah. <laughs> it's just just pays my bills, but it pays my bills. And yeah. the again, that is something else that I've had a lot of arguments with people about because it's not conventional. People don't agree with it. Yeah. People can't understand yeah. why I would create a platform with a paywall to show my more explicit art. Mm. Which I don't really understand what's so hard to get about that, but you know, yeah, people have different yeah, no, I've, yeah, thoughts. I've spoken to people about that before, and it's like if you're not being forced into doing something, then why shouldn't you do it? If you want to do it, mm-hmm. what's what's it got to do with anyone else? Yeah, and I've I've wondered if maybe it's the yeah, platform, it's, if it's yeah. because I do it on OnlyFans, and the only reason for that is traffic. Because there's a lot of traffic when it started. Yeah. Um, so it just made sense. Um, and I'm also really lazy and don't want to do the different tiers of Patreon. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I've spoken to models before as well. The Patreon, the stuff you would find on OnlyFans and the stuff you would find on Patreon is very different. Mm-hmm. You can't, the Patreon doesn't let that, allow that sort of yeah. um, content on there as well. So you're, you're going to go as a model you're creating that content you're going to go where well one you're allowed to post that content and Mm -hmm. two where the traffic is like you said you know people go to OnlyFans for that type of content Mm -hmm. and so you you just you it just it just just doesn't make sense not to yeah exactly (laughs) and I I mean I do custom custom work which again is normally the point of conflict um, but my customs, even then, like I don't do the more sex work side that a lot of people expect with customs. It's yeah. I will show as much as I do in my nude art. It's just it's done in a, a home setting rather than a an artsy setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't do and like I very clearly state what I do and don't do, mm. and everyone knows where they stand. So yeah, yeah, it goes back to it goes back to like you you know what you do, mm-hmm. you know your levels, and you're not forced into doing something no. you have said no to. 
I've had people push. Yeah, I've never got yeah. what they want. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah, good, good. That's yeah. that's the thing, you know. As long you, as long as you stand stand your ground and you, um, you know the level you do, mm-hmm. then why? Yeah. It's your choice. It's your body. Because it's not conventional. You do as you do. Yeah. Hi, Beanie. Mm. We have a cat. A cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. amazing. So, um, yeah. What, what advice so for a new model starting out? Yes. Whether this, just, just starting out in mod- modeling, what's, what advice would you give them? Starting out in modeling. The, the one, yeah, the one, one piece of advice. Um, you give them? That's hard because I would want to give lots. Yeah. Two pieces. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) Your safety and comfort comes first. Every time. Do not let anyone push your levels. Always let someone know your location if someone can't come with you on a shoot. Vet people constantly. Everyone could potentially be, frankly, a life-threatening risk. It is such a dangerous job because you are going into very intimate situations with people that you don't know. Your safety is a priority. Your comfort is a priority. Do not do anything. If your gut tells you something's off, something is off. You don't even have to be able to explain it. If something's not right, don't do it. something's not right, leave. Find an excuse, but don't stay. You're, that is the absolute main thing. The other thing is art doesn't have to be pretty. And this is something I'm learning and something I'm experimenting with at the moment. You do not have to look pretty constantly. If you create something, oh, my door's gone. If you create something that is beautiful, that doesn't automatically translate into something sexy or something that is deemed by the media to be beautiful, you can squish your tummy, you can hunch your shoulders. You can twist yourself, you can pull at your face, you can pull weird expressions, and that is just as beautiful. It's just that society has told you it's not. You can be awkward and clumsy and messy. You are still beautiful. And even if they don't translate into the likes that you've been told that you're supposed to have, that doesn't make you any less worthy, and that doesn't make your art any less incredible. And it's a really hard thing to remember. But you have to be kind to yourself and learn that your body is not going to do, isn't going to be Instagram perfect 24 seven. It is consisting of posing and lighting and angles. And you are human. You are not this thing that has been created for social media. You're not trying to fit yourself in a mold that people have created for you. The whole point of being an artist is to break that mould. Be who you are, be true to yourself, be safe and be okay with people not liking your work because you will never, ever, ever please everybody. If you please yourself, that's enough. And there will be people who will support you. There will be people who will support you and then not. And there will be people who, frankly, outwardly hate your work. And every one of those is okay. As long as you are okay with it yourself, as long as you are happy with yourself, as long as you are true to yourself and safe, you're doing the right thing and just keep going. Those are my two points in a very large explanation where I tried to (laughs) shove more things in. (laughs) No, no, definitely. But yeah. That's amazing. I think we will end on that. Okay. That's, yeah, beautiful response. Amazing.